So good evening. I'd like to call the select board meeting of May 7th to order at 6.04 p.m. Uh, we'll start with uh, opening remarks, announcements, agenda review, and the announcements. You had mentioned a couple things that needed to be added to our uh, Yes, there, just to the announcement about the scene. Senate seat and the um, tragedy of it as a uh, spot for the election. Okay, so we'll make sure we get to those tonight. Um, any other things on our agenda that need to be adjusted in any way? I think that's a no. Um, <laughs> we'll get right into it. First thing on our agenda is a third quarter budget update. So it's all here. So take us through that. Right here. Right. Hmm? Well, the mic work all the way. It should be. Yeah. All right. So we're three quarters of the way through the fiscal year. Actually, a little more. You know, do these reports until a month later. And I'm not going to bother going through all of the revenues that are written out here because it's pretty detailed and they're pretty much the same that come up every third quarter. It's all timing issues and when they come in. Um, the one, a couple I will mention, fines and forfeits, it's at 101.1% collected. And this is due to the um, l unusual large zoning violations at the presidential apartments. That's an anomaly I want to point it out. And then the other is penalties and interest. We're at 118.7%. And this is up from the last few years. And we're watching this to see if this is a new trend or just outlier years. A higher trend could indicate growing difficulty of residents paying taxes. So this one we want to watch. On the expenditure side, most of these were explained at, on the floor of town meeting. Monday when we did Article 4A and where the savings are and where the shorts, the um, deficits are, the deficits are in places, are in general government this year because of our health insurance deficit which was about 385000 Article 4A voted at town meeting Monday night moved 125000 from community services to general government to help cover the 385000 thousand dollars along with other savings that we had in general gov government due to the vacant um, finance director position and other vacancies and a savings in property and casualty insurance of twenty thousand and there was also savings from the res uh, salary reserve we had there which helped us to cover the health insurance deficit and that is covered at this point in time for no other emergencies coming in in the next couple of months um, snow and ice, as of today, we were at 97827 for deficit. We're trying to cover more, in the, more of that with more savings in that functional area. Um, and we're in a way at that. And I don't know, uh, I think that's it. Enterprise funds are as they should be at this time. There's just one correction I want to make under expenditures on legal services. At the end, it says this includes payments through, I think your copy says March, it should say January. What was that again? Uh, under expenditures. Yep. There's legal services, and at the end of the sentence, it says payments through March, it should say January. So we paid our legal bills through January as of March 31st. We paid more, it just happened in April. Are there questions from Ms. Aldrich about the budget? No? Okay. Well then, I guess you're off the phone. Thank you very much. <laughs> unless, unless someone has a question. All right. I think the, the only one that I'd have about the golf course is that we covered that in the last round, so I have probably nothing new to say. Now she has a little in there too. I mean, that effect, so. <coughs> All right. Thank you very much. So moving on to our next uh, item is the audit review. And did you want to do that? Yeah, I'll do it briefly and then I think Senyan can add in. Uh, and we'll add in a lot probably. Uh, the audit uh, committee did meet as always uh, does and um, it was a very um, good meeting. Uh, 
basics are, I don't know if you've looked at the auto consensus electronically, uh, it uh, contains, you know, what, what uh, the representative from Melanson Keith, who was there, was um, pointing out, Tanya, is that uh, the presentation of the financial statements are really in a different format from um, how we and other municipalities look at budgets so that it's not always easy to take the presentation as it's made in the budget, uh, in the audit report, and to make sense of it in comparison to what we used to deal with in the budget. She did point out several things that were of um, particular significance. One that certainly got the largest amount of discussion was the OPEP discussion. And that's because, um, as you might recall, um, the accounting standards changed so that um, they now um, were getting into a phase where a portion of the liability which used to be just reported as a footnote, now has to actually show up as a liability. And uh, so uh, we were discussing that at length and comparing it with the uh, footnote material, which is the more complete report. Uh, I think that the uh, bottom line uh, of what I would say from it was is that she was also pointing out that they work with a number of communities and she thinks that um, our efforts to not only establish but to actually fund um, a trust um, is above and beyond most other communities and that we are in very um, good condition. We have good plans going forward and uh, of course we are all aware that the pension liability, which will be paid in something like 2026 or something like that, uh, but in any event, once it's paid, it will become available. And uh, that, uh, uh, so uh, there was absolutely no concern uh, expressed whatsoever. The other topic that came up in a little bit of discussion was just what we're all aware of, which was the health thing, the trust fund discussion, um, so that there was no surprise information that came forward out of that. Um, I think uh, there was something that uh, Ms. Aldrich just mentioned a, a moment ago that came up briefly in discussion too, and that was the question of uh, sir, uh, uh, some lag in paying some property taxes to uh, a greater extent than what we're used to. But certainly, um, we are in very solid shape in comparison to other communities. She did draw comparisons to other communities across the state. And she also pointed out that this is a liability that will be collected. And uh, so, uh, I think that the two things that were the takeaways were is, is that uh, in looking at the fi financial statements that it was, uh, there was no qualifications whatsoever, so it was an unqualified audit, which is what you're looking for. Uh, and in correlation to that, uh, in addition to that, we had no management letter this year, uh, which was an indication that we had resolved problems from prior management letters and there was nothing new to report and uh, so the, that was uh, important information also and uh, just generally that uh, her observations about our financial um, planning in the town and the, the, the solid reserves that we have uh, put us in good financial condition. So it was an excellent report. Did you want to add? Yeah, I, um, first, the mention the comments <coughs> of the audit committee is there are the uh, uh, our finance director and um, the finance officer for the shopping data from the school district, uh, and including representatives from the finance committee, the school committee, the board of library trustees, and the select board. That's that kind of proposal comprised the um, audit committee. So 
So those are the people who are in the room listening to the audit and asking questions. Uh, and also, just I think it is significant that there was no management letter that really speaks to um, due diligence in following up on all the articles and on all the items that were listed in any previous um, management letter, and that there were no findings of recommendations for approving our that, that rose to the level for being written to a management letter. They always have suggestions for how we can do things better. We take those under consideration. Um, but the fact that there's no actual letter was a good thing. Just a couple of questions. So, the reserves. In years past, we've often asked the auditor to look at a particular area of operation mm -hmm. to see um, if they had any suggestions specifically, not to necessarily find fault or that sort of thing. I was curious if we had selected something this year for, for a sort of deeper look from the auditors or not. Yes, there were two. Uh, town clerk's office and council on aging. Okay. And those are things that uh, I'll to we'll look at next year. Uh, next year I believe is uh, leisure services and um, school that was this year? That's coming up. Oh. Are there other questions from the board? All right. Well, thank you very much for that. It's always good to hear that it's unqualified. That sounds a bit <laughs> upside down, but in this case, it's a good thing. Um, so anyway, so unless there's other questions, thank you very much. Uh, and we'll move on to our next agenda item, which is uh, appointments under the transition provisions of the Charter. So let's get Mr. Steinberg, if you'd like to guide us through a little bit. Uh, Here it is. Yes, I sent, um, I, I wrote a memo at the request of the chair, which uh, I believe has been uh, provided to you at the, uh, for tonight's meeting and it's in the packet of materials. Uh, we are in a situation where we now have to observe the transition provisions in the Charter and um, the uh, provision um, essentially provides that we would are not to appoint, make new appointments other than uh, not maintain sufficient multi-member body memberships um, to have a quorum plus one additional member so that committees can continue to do business. Um, it um, seems that, um, you know, we're getting into that time of year where we um, normally go through the process of reaching out to everybody on committees <coughs> who and either indicating that you've reached a point where you've served for uh, our policy had been essentially six years or two three-year terms uh, or uh, and that people are not eligible for reappointment or uh, that we're asking them what their interest in reappointment is. And uh, what seems to be a logical alternative um, is to just uh, continue all existing positions as holdovers and um, let people continue to serve up until the time that the uh, council can, uh, is elected and takes office and can make other arrangements and that we should limit our appointments to uh, numbers sufficient to reach the threshold or vacancies as they occur. So I suggested a motion, uh, which is on the motion sheet, that we continue appointments of committee members with terms uh, ending on June 30, 2018 until replaced or reappointed by the town council to be elected in November um, or on the member's resignation. And uh, that way, all of the committees can continue to function. We are placed in a position of making choices amongst existing committee members who may be interested in continuing to serve, and we leave maximum flexibility as directed 
by the charter to the new council. Questions? Ms. Brooke. And so you're okay with the wording, you know, we get, we're getting more and more familiar with some of these phrases from the transition. So no appointments shall be made that do not meet this criterion after the charter is adopted. So since we're just continuing continuing appointments, we're not calling them reappointments or new appointments, we feel like Steinberg, that meets the spirit of given the whole context of the entire process. Is that how you I think so is because um, and the, the purpose is to allow the maximum flexibility in committee appointments going forward to the council but sits in place so that the motion that I've recommended to con uh, continue appointments that would otherwise expire until replaced or reappointed by the council uh, or on the date of the member's resignation gives absolute uh, control to the council for committee membership. And, and uh, it is entirely consistent with what the purpose was of that transition provision. Um, <clears throat> I'm not necessarily opposed to this uh, method, but um, it's less sort of literal than saying, you know, quorum plus one. It does solve the problem of um, the, perhaps picking and choosing among members if three people wanted to continue and we went literally with quorum plus one, we'd have to just want to, you know, two people off the island and that create more contention maybe than was envisioned. Um, I, I do think it will be hard for the council once they're up and running to have to go back and um, figure out, do, you know, do the people who were continued, do they keep them on longer or do they start looking for other people? I mean, there's a bunch of issues that they'll have to face regardless of how we manage this. Um, it, it's a little bit interesting set of problems we're kind of different you know to me at least if your appointment <clears throat> ended <clears throat> July 1 of 2018 it is a reappointment we're calling it a holdover but it's we are reappointing we're putting that person in the seat and does that make it harder for the council to then pick their own people but I think this solves some of the problems. I don't think there's any one neat, uh, happy way to do this. So I'm open to this method. Um, the other question I had, uh, Mr. Sandberg, in the motion it says elected on November 6, 2018. We don't yet know if they will be elected on November 6 or the subsequent date. Uh. It depends upon the legislature. Well, I know at this that's point. it. So this is quite literal. So I wonder if we might want to kind of fudge this a little. Mr. Walton. I was going to speak to the substance, but this is easy. Just take out the words to be elected on the date by the council. I mean, when the council is elected, the council is the council. That's problem solved. Okay. Uh, I, like Ms. Kruger, I had some thoughts about this because it seems, you know, we talked before about certain terms expiring on a certain date because this. If, if we are allowing or empowering the council to make changes, this puts the onus on them to throw somebody out, which is not my preferred version. So I did, you know, off the top of my head, I'm very, very grateful to Mr. Steinberg for doing this. Mm -hmm. Had I been doing it, I guess I would have thought about a limited term so that the council had a chance to start with a clean slate, either reappointing or uh, maintaining, because otherwise it, it, we're basically, we are basically influencing the way the council is going to act by appointing someone to a term of unspecified length or traditional length, it seems to me. Uh, the one disadvantage to that is that um, council is going to have a lot to attend to once it is in place, and uh, the whole organizational and learning curve is going to be 
significant um, in how it chooses its priorities to do business uh, is really its decision to make. Um, I thought about that question that you raised, if we came up with a date um, and there was an automatic expiration of all of these terms, it, puts, it may put more pressure on them than they want. That they may actually uh, benefit from the flexibility that we have, that we're offering to them, because they have the ultimate choice to do whatever they believe is correct, including the timing of when they deal with this particular issue. Um, so I guess that was the counterweight to it. <laughs> well, uh, apparently we're just not going to agree completely on this when it comes right down to it. But I would argue that continuing this appoint, continuing these appointments actually does have precedent in terms of throughout the Commonwealth, people are often just on appointments until they get replaced. And so although we like to have the nice hard and fast rule of June 30th, that's not in fact always true. In fact, almost every year, we end up holding people over without taking any official action because we don't, haven't gotten information back, we haven't been able to act in a timely fashion to do something with their appointments effective July 1, and they continue to serve. They don't just go away and not continue to serve. And in some cases, I guess they're not, because they're not meeting in the summer, so it doesn't matter for them. But for others, that continuation is a tip, is a typical standard, so that makes me feel okay about this, as opposed to calling it a reappointment for now to infinity, whenever that may be that they get it done, or versus giving everybody that hard and fast date, so that um, again, so that, as Mr. Steinberg pointed out, so that the council has to deal with that. I mean, all these things are true, and it's just the matter of that everybody said it's just the, a matter of balancing those things, and I don't feel that we need to give the council a clean slate from the standpoint of having suddenly, having everybody's terms expire because in fact the charter talks about the fact that people who are serving will continue to serve. And they can get to it when they get to it. So it, they will have probably enough members that it's a quorum to get work done while they're sorting out what their priorities are as a council as to which committees become committees of the council as in council members on them versus remaining independent type committees. And so as they sort all that out, it feels like this gives them the time to do that. And as long as we make it clear with some carefully worded language as we extend these terms, which doesn't have to be in the motion, but something about the letter that we send that indicates that we are doing this in the spirit of the transition as opposed to because you should be on pins and needles that you're going to be fired. But in all reality, you might be. <laughs> so um, it's, it's no guarantee right. of any length of time. But there was never any guarantee. No one is has a right to a second three-year term. And so there was never any guarantee they were going to continue on. And in fact, we'll just be grateful if enough of them continue on right. to serve as a form at this point. Oh, did, did you have your hand up? Go ahead. Okay. So, um, you know, I think what this does actually, the way the memo reads, is that it sort of freezes everything on the date of the election. So we're going to have to continue with all the people who are there if they're willing to serve and continue on. Uh, and I think the, the letter would be an invitation for them to continue on, not to appoint, it's not an appointment, but then um, with the proper caveat that when the council gets organized and gets into this, they'll have the opportunity to fill these seats. I was just going to add, um, however, say um, in a case where you know, we, we do this nicely worded letter and we find out, you know, three members have decided they're, they're done for different reasons and we're short and we do need to do a new appointment either through recruitment or maybe if there's a, uh, some people who have already sent in um, CAFs and I, I would think at that point we would try to honor the quorum plus one. So we may need to build up to quorum plus one in certain cases where there are more than one um, continuing numbers. Yeah, absolutely. So does that mean we would still want people to send in 
citizen activity forms, either in, for that type of instance or to have sort of bank up interested people that the, the council might want to look at? I would suggest yes to that. Sure. Yes. <laughs> well, we always need a bigger problem. Well, so then that should probably be in that letter or right. whatever. You know, so you I, can I can also see maybe making a little the statement or sort of news, release kind of thing or just that we grapple with this issue. And this is what we're going to do. Other questions or comments? Are we ready for a motion? I'm sort of ready. Formally read it. I move to continue the appointment of committee members with terms expiring on June 30th, 2018, until replaced or appointed by the town council or the member's resignation. Second. Motion and a second. Is there further discussion? Well, just I, I did note that you changed it from reappointed to appointed, so that is what we intended. Do we need to offer the I'm, I'm, I don't know what we're talking are you, about. Are you I on thought I said the words oh. until replaced or re I'm sorry, if I didn't say replaced or reappointed, I meant to. You said the you, word I was trying well, what to. What I heard was replaced or appointed. Okay. And I, I just want to, I don't care but which one. Do you it want. should say replaced or reappointed. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, for the discussion, hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? That's you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sorry for that confusion. No, that's what I meant right. to say. Um, next on our agenda is uh, views slash positions on April 30, 2018 annual town meeting articles. So I think we have an opportunity. I mean, we have a couple of other things before we get into this because this could be a wide range of discussion. But we do have one um, license, I believe, that we need to do, which we can do for the end. But um, Get it over. Mm. Or we want to do it now. <laughs> Would you rather do it now? <laughs> then yeah. we, no, we got it done. Yeah. All right, let's do it now. So, would so someone to like to make a motion? I move to approve the application of Top of the Campus Inc. for a special license to serve all alcoholic beverages at the Life Science Lab S330 from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Kimberly McAllister, board member. Sorry. There's a second. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? So that's unanimous. Uh, wait a minute. I, the, the, the only problem is, is there a date on that? Yes, May 9, 2018. Yep. I, I thought I heard Thank you for, that. no, you didn't, oh, but it's a nice the theory. I was looking at it going, what's missing from this? If I just read it, it'll become yeah. clear what's it's missing here, from yeah. that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank all you. All what was the date? May 9th. Yeah. Luckily, luckily so okay. it is on the agenda. Yeah. Okay. It's May 9th. Just, just didn't make it into the motion. Just throw it off the motion. So, uh, Thank you, Mr. Steinberg. Yes. Okay. All right. So now it's uh, review take positions on April 30th annual town meeting articles. Um, so we've been discussing sort of should or shouldn't. <laughs> I don't want to say the word allow, but you know, we've gotten advice from town council about um, whether it's appropriate for town meeting to take action on certain articles, and we've kind of operated in a certain way. I think the moderator has changed his opinion about how he might approach some of those as far as just the mechanics of, of town meeting. I don't know if that would alter how we've uh, taken our view towards certain certain articles, and so I know that um, one of the members wanted to revisit uh, at least one, and so I thought this would be an opportunity to, to have that conversation. So, it's good to Right, I think that's very good. So, um, a few weeks ago, we took a position saying that we thought that uh, Zoning amendment to change the supplemental dwelling bylaw. I don't have it in front of me, but essentially going from 800 square feet to 1,000 square feet, with the understanding that um, it would be used more, it could, the unit could be slightly larger than that. That was the main premise. But uh, at least for me that night, I was trying to apply a very strict standard from my understanding of the. KP law guidance document, and even though they had said, 
because it had to do with increasing affordable housing. We had, uh, it was okay to go forward. I, I at that time, felt, uh, gave us a sort of conservative meaning of, on that, and, and I guess other people agreed because we decided to advise the town meeting shouldn't act on that. And then as this has unfolded, I realized that town meeting was going to be allowed to act on it, and so maybe it didn't really matter that we made that distinction that we could just go ahead and have town meeting um, take that action. I suppose we could preface it with this was one that we had kind of looked at both ways, but at the end of the day, if the moderator is going to allow it to be acted on, uh, maybe we want to take a position on the substance of the article as well. Um, so I just, you know, I guess my own evolution, my, I, I was having second thoughts about my initial position with both. So our current recommendation is to refer this to the planning board mm -hmm. and the idea that we didn't felt it comported with the, you know, being consistent with the, mm -hmm. with the transition provisions. Mm -hmm. However, um, if absent the transition, we're thinking about the article itself, you know, we want to take a different position if ultimately the article gets moved. Um, like what if referral failed? Right. Know, what would we say? Right. I don't know if, if we have or would like to articulate that in that uh, a bit more. I don't think it's a bad thing to be prepared for other options because there may be several. Uh, it's 33. No, it's something else. Okay. <laughs> it's really okay. So, does anyone else have, you know, I had second thoughts. That doesn't mean the whole board has second thoughts on this. Well, I mean, again, I think the, the, the problem for me is that we're caught without maybe adequate guidance because I can see a very strict view or a very uh, capacious view, and it seemed that KP Law leaned toward the latter but didn't quite didn't quite take the one or the other. Um, as far as this particular one went, and then we're just comfortable about the fact that, the, that we, I think we should have the, the right to tell the moderator what an appropriate motion we're asking for, and he should list some in or out order. He seems not inclined to do that which is the second problem. Uh, in the case of supplemental dwelling, I guess I figured if we're doing inclusionary zoning, I can't see not doing the other ones because, you know, part of the idea behind the whole KP law memo was the idea of continuing normal business, and that could include not just urgent and necessary, but things that were underway for, underway for a long time, like the desire for affordable housing. We've produced no affordable housing through inclusionary zoning so far, basically. Uh, the supplemental dwelling unit has a much better chance of producing additional housing at workforce level if not affordable with a capital A. So it seems to me by the standard of allowing continuing uh, town goals to be fulfilled and the likelihood <coughs> of achieving outcomes in the near future that supplemental dwelling unit is, is totally acceptable. Again, I could go either way. I don't, I don't care. But yeah, for me, that's the consistency is following what our, what our paid attorneys tell us we can do. Right. So I was okay with the what I said back when we discussed it, which was trying to differentiate it somehow to show that we were that we were differentiating, that we weren't just saying everything. But as people have pointed out, the moderator has since changed his mind about his view on our level of authority here. So I'm confused by, I guess, more so than our recommendation on this particular issue, which we could develop more fully because we would, if we decide that are going to have a position other than we don't think this was one of the things we should do, which we have obviously mixed feelings about, is that is still separate from the issue of if we have any authority, which the moderator doesn't agree that we do in this case, but I believe we still do in other cases associated with the transition to the charter. So in that case, if an article that's a zoning article or any article that we don't at some point in this process believe is something town meeting should have acted on, do we just let it make its merry way to the attorney general? Or do we say, hey, look, we have a charter that says we're only supposed to do certain things. You be the big bad guy and figure this out. Or what I mean, I, I want to. I'm trying to understand what level. Not only you know our recommendations. That seems pretty straightforward. Like we could go either way on Article 33 in terms of making a recommendation. But if it passes, 
Is it something that we're comfortable saying that's fine? Is there anything that we're not comfortable saying is fine that we would have to say to the Attorney General, yes, these were okay, you know, not because we said it two weeks ago, but because we believe it now based on all the other circumstances. These are okay, but these are not. Or are we just not asserting any authority in, in this conversation? And I guess to some extent it doesn't really matter until it happens. But I also think it's perhaps a bit unfair to town meeting to say, sure, we just have positions on everything. If we have any indication that we might in the future say, you know what, we didn't really think that town meeting should have acted on these things, and so we're going to follow through in some fashion. It feels a little disingenuous not to mention it to town meeting. So there are two that I would um, most likely, I don't know what the outcome will be, I'm you that I would most likely um, want to intercede in some way okay. before it was approved. But, it, but it, And I hear what you say about being disingenuous, but it's also going to be premature mm -hmm. until we see what happens and we take that action. So we could say, um, we haven't you know, decided yet, but we have discussed taking <coughs> such an action because we feel very strong. But there's only two in, the, in Article 33, so no, it was not one. Okay. So that's why I've kind of pulled it out. And I think, you know, Mr. Bogleman at one, at one point said, you know, if you follow the KP law guidance, you sort of have a rationale. And I was like, no, I want to figure it out for myself. But now I think, actually, since there are two that I feel strongly about it, there is a rationale for following the guidance. Because we're saying those didn't make the cut, and our attorneys, in fact, said so, and we agree, whereas these other ones were open. Go to the road, but we're okay with so you're referring to I'm sorry, you're referring to the petition article that's a brand new rezoning concept and the new concept around the notes by law. Those were the two that's been holding out as the two. Okay. I just want to make yes. sure where we're yes, those parsing two. Things. And so I think we could just maybe let in fairness let Tommy know that those are the ones that we're, we really find problematic we haven't yet deliberated on it on what the action is, but my type interesting as well. I don't even think it's successful. So with that I, I could make a I could I could make a motion, uh because we're running out of time. Uh, we could still we could either rescind the the motion to refer, leaving that alone, if uh, if referral um, isn't acted on or, or approved by town meeting, I would move that um, the select board um, recommend the approval of, the, of Article 33. So that's a motion? That <laughs> <laughs> wasn't very well crafted. Okay. Um, I think this is if, why I believe the select board is being, because it's a motion to refer the moderator, but it's going to the select board right. for the main motion. Uh, so I guess the first question is do we want to still ref recommend referral? Should that fail, we would then support the main motion, or do we want to change our? Well, I guess my question that I've always been struggling with is, in, um, if we believe something should not be acted upon by town meeting, moderator disagrees, and town meeting disagrees, and town meeting acts on it. What does KP law say that our authority is? that point, do we have any authority whatsoever to say, uh, thank you, town meeting, but we ruled that this is not allowable. If that's permissible and expected under the charter transition provision, then we ought to know that and be considering and discussing that. So that question was posed to town attorney what the town attorney said is the select board could send a letter along with the bylaw to the attorney general saying that citing the town attorney's letter that you're that it's your support, this is in conflict with the recently passed charter and we think that the attorney general should not approve it if the town meeting chooses to approve it. So that was that was one one way to handle it. Um, yes. So I'm not willing to go that far for Article 33. 
I would for the other two, perhaps, when we get down to deliberating on them. And that's why we, we kind of gone in full circle, because we talked about this before, and we don't know. We can send that kind of a letter, whether it would prevail or not, but I, I would not be interested in sending that type of letter in the case of Article 33, because I think it's in enough of a gray area. And having now gone through the review of all the articles, that's one I have changed my mind about. So I guess the question becomes, um, do we want to still have our sort of default position be referral, and then alternative to that then would be passage, is that, or do we want to reverse those and recommend passage, and if not, then referral? I'm just curious for I the, wish other people would weigh in. Yeah. I don't have a strong. I'm, I'm fine with staying with referral and then passage if, if referral fails. Because I think it it could wait a little bit. I don't know that it mm -hmm. needs the absolute no. I mean, I sort of was <coughs> in double on the other. I think we've discussed this as well. So um, I think that's kind of how I said my poorly worded motion was: if <laughs> referral uh, was defeated, we would then support Article 33. I guess I, you know, <coughs> I think we're all wrestling the same things here. I guess my question would be: if we were not dealing with the charter situation, how would you vote on this? Because it seems to me if we're saying referral is appropriate, but it can pass, I mean, it's not quite as inconsistent as the planning board working hard to make its own motion and then saying if that fails, it'll take the petitioner's one, which it fought for most to reject uh, or improve. But it seems to me if we're for it, we should be for it. And, I mean, unless, it, I guess I want to know why referral. Is that just a leftover previous conversation mm -hmm. or is there a strong reason? Because not all motions are ready for, for action and we can have different opinions about the urgency. Sure. Yeah, I think it's going to come down to different opinions about the urgency. All things considered, I think we did all make mention previously that we don't have a problem with this article, the, the content. It's just where are we drawing the lines? And if this one's not in the gray area anymore, I'm not convinced it's out of the secret or something area. In term, because <coughs> unless, of course, barring any rescheduling motions, which can always happen, this would be the first one that we would make that speech associated with that says, we have this opinion. This is uncharted territory for us. We're trying to figure this out. Obviously, Mr. Slaughter, you were planning to say something along those lines when we were talking about a referral because we weren't saying that the content was bad. That wasn't why it was being referred. And in fact, in many cases, referral is, it's really good except. And in this case, it's good, except we're concerned about this thing. And I think that the reason that it's unfortunate for perhaps for 33 to be the first one out of the gate that is like that, but I still don't think it's completely unreasonable. And I think we can just, you know, we may not agree, but I think, I don't think it's unreasonable that we would say, this is how we looked at it. We are unsure as to whether or not this meets the test in the charter but we don't have a problem with the content. And so we were thinking referral seemed like the best idea. And then people said, yes, I agree. We shouldn't deal with the zoning because zoning should be left up to the future council. That could then set the tone for the other things. Or they could say, you're crazy. We're going to do this. In which case we'd say, well, in that case, we support it. So I don't know. If, if we but don't set it up we, with we this to, one. But we have to we have to land on if one. Well, that's why I'm saying I'm other. going with staying what with I'm referral. speaking for Stay right now referral. is referral because of the rationale. So my motion accepted referral, but should that not be passed because people want to vote on it, and we don't have another position voted, um, unless we vote on the motion to say, okay, then we support I like that motion. Adoption. Okay. I so think in that motion. Okay, so second is. In a second. Okay. <laughs> So right. it's staying with referral, and if that fails, then we'll recommend. Wholeheartedly. <laughs> right, and because that will okay. be true for any of okay. the others as well, some right. of which we feel very strongly should pass, and some of which we feel very strongly should not. Okay. Right. Great. All right, so we, we made a decision. Right. So is there further discussion? So plan A. I just, I think we should let the planning board or planning director know post haste so they may change their presentation and their presentation differently. Okay. No other. Discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? You missed a vote. No. All right. So 
that's a 41 vote. 41. I think we probably will come back to 27, I think it is, that has to do with the East Street property. Um, just to mention now, and the trust is meeting on Thursday night where they're going to discuss a bit more in detail. That article in the motion is likely to be made, um, and perhaps uh, craft some rationale around sort of urgency, necessity, and that sort of thing. I mean, it's still on for both. You, you said it stayed the way it was. Well, okay. what's our final position on Article 27? Because I don't have the one that was emailed to us the other day with the corrections, and we don't have one on our desk tonight. But the one the last one we got was yellow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> was was what our vote was for Article 27. I think we've I think we've held off on that one. I think oh, really? not we yet. Didn't vote? Okay. I don't think we have. Oh, no. so oh, we do have 27. We about so 27 times. may actually okay. be the first one okay. to really so have this conversation about. And I'm <clears throat> whether we. Decide it's not consistent or not. It may be an appropriate time to to sort of weigh in on that because most everything okay. before so that we is have really two more things to come. Right. So uh, we one more thing related to town meeting, which could come up tonight. Uh, if there is a motion to amend or otherwise add money to a school budget uh, tonight, as pure as possible. Is it our position that because we have supported the budget for the amount that it was in, um, that, that that's where we are, and that we oppose any addition? Is that isn't that implied by our supported budget? Or did you want to? Have I just wanted to make sure to that I just wanted to make sure that there was nobody who was wanted to take a different view on it. I was just going to say that's been a historical mm -hmm. and philosophical position, but Mr. Steinberg would like to make that more explicit uh, in one of those things that we couldn't anticipate before. Well, there, there is additional um, issues that come up because if this has to do with the regional school budget, mm -hmm. uh, the whole question about how the assessment method um, works how the politics of the assessment method work uh, is kind of intricately involved in any attempt to do anything different from passing motions as passed. And uh, I'm willing to say that it goes a little bit beyond the usual who voted the amount, and this is the amount we think is appropriate. I, I, I think that you should go ahead and feel free to say that. And we did, unlike so frequently, when we don't have any heads up like we did last week, um, we did have we have something of a heads up that we've heard informally. Mm -hmm. And so to say that does make it perfectly clear. We heard of it, we had a chance to say, oh, but, 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 and, but, but we, we chose really not to change it. We're and staying, we chose not. Sticking with our guns, so you should feel empowered. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we have something important. So, okay. uh, yeah, so there, um, on Friday, May 4th, uh, there was a tragedy in Covers Pond where uh, a young man died um, while attempting to swim across the pond. And uh, Chief Nelson was in command of the scene, and he's here. Dave Zomak is here. If there are any questions or give a little more detail um, to the situation after. Uh, tough, tough day. It was a really tough, tough, really, really tough day. Um, we got a call about quarter out of after three or something. So there was a sun around there that uh, saw someone was flying with the uh, with Tyler in the pond. So we sent all our tro troops down. Uh, and right, right away ahead, the firefighter formed to a corner and Casey uh, Nagel, Officer Nagel, Officer Nagel, put on the PFDs and jumped, jumped in to see if they could find the spot where the gentleman the gentleman and went down. His friend, he, he and a friend of his had, had an officer, so. And the pond is cold. It's still, it's still cold. I mean, we, I mean, it, geez, we had uh, snow last, last, last week, so, and so streams, streams that fit on, so it's going to stay, 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 stay cold. If you're not, a, if you're not used, used to that, if you're not a cold water swimmer, and have to, have to, have to, have to admit it to that, uh, the cold will just sap, sap your strength or whatever, and you'll we'll cramp, 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 cramp up. So his friend began to uh, found her. He tried, tried to. Get, get to do him. He couldn't. He, he went back, back to shore. 
they, they fall, fall, fall calls. There's a young young lady out out there. I don't know her name, but uh, we we have we have her. She 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 was out at the pond. She swims up there a lot, and she went out went out there and dove multiple 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 times to try 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 to find find find. But she was pretty in the in instrumental and kind of a pinpoint point for us where he was about about where where he was. But we brought in um, dive team from uh, North Northfield. South Hadley to District One, Sunderland, and the State State Police, and then we had all all our our people, and we we deployed a rescue rescue sled, and one of the good good things that the came came out about it, we worked all all these different agencies came came together, worked worked well to. Uh, to, to get to uh, to all the all the all the years of the covering the As I said, it was a tough tough day, uh, but it, every, everyone worked well to get a good with the you know so focus of trying to try to get it get it done and done going back back to to shore. We even we we even brought brought, brought in our chat 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 chat, chat one for the young 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 man and friend. So. Uh, uh, sad, sad to say that uh, today, uh, his you know, his friend and his friend friend's pair, 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 parents were 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 at the at the phone call today at the, at, the, at, the, at the mass today. They clean, 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 clean. So, but one thing, uh, his sister is gonna walk walk down for for him at grand 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 Tough day. Um, been a tough, been a, been a rather, a rather intense ten, 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 ten or twelve day, days. Been a hard, hard. We've had some other. Uh, we we had a, a, a significant, significant front fire last last, last week. Uh, a gentleman, young man, uh, came about back, back close, 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 close to losing his life. But our our guys did a great, great job in in, uh, in making sure that that didn't didn't happen. Didn't happen. Spoken with his father, father a few few times. Talked talked to him last night. Uh, he's he, he got this discharge last night. Uh, I guess yesterday afternoon. He's on the road. The road to the recovery. It's going to be tough, but he's going to be okay. Um, the dad just couldn't say enough about whatever whatever one that about how his son. I I, I let our, our folks folks know that I didn't know. When I talked talk to him that night, he the thing thing he said was that uh, he wanted to thank us for say to say to say say his boy his boy his boy's life. And, and he broke he broke down and I mean that's you know it's a call that no parent parent wants to so, but to testament to our our fire 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 department, our police police fire department did all they 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 could to search and all that stuff. So, you know, it's been an intense ten ten days. Ten, Well, my comment is really just to um, ask you to thank um, all of our staff and to we thank you, but to, and then through you we want to thank all of the staff in the department and all of the others who were involved from um, other public safety departments and Amherst elsewhere who assisted. We very much appreciate all that was done in both um, instances that you described, and uh, I had heard that there may have been some complications on Main Street because uh, fire um, detectors, uh, smoke detectors, may have been intentionally disabled by That's an issue where we're references. So, and if there's anything that we need to attend to, that you will let us know, please. One 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 thing that I say a lot is that I'm the luckiest guy around who I get to work with, with these folks every, every, every day. We've got such good people. They work so hard. They dedicate what they do to protect the 
this this town. So I, I can't say enough about that. I'm just damn proud. Of I just wanted to add, and I know we're wrapping up. Um, I know Mr. Bachman reached out to the select board when this was happening at, at Parker's Pond. I just wanted to say how you know my heart goes out to the parents yeah. and and to, you know I've been thinking about that drowning a lot of the last few days. I think all of us in the community are affected, but I understand the sort of trauma that happens to the first responders also. As Mr. Steinberg said, to let um, you know, you know, and Mr. Zomack and Mr. Bachman, who were, you know, dealing with this in, in, at, at the time, um, you know, to, that you, you really I just appreciate the work you do, but just that this has deep resonance deeply for us. You know, we want all of our young people to be safe. Part of, part of what helps us, us the old, is knowing that folks like you are thinking about about us and appreciate what, what, what they do every, every day. It's hard, it's hard, 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 stuff. hard stuff. Thank you for coming in and talking to us. Bye. Yeah, the only other thing is that you all are aware that on uh, 5 o'clock on Friday we sent a Rosenberg design from the Senate, so now we are in the vacancy in that seat. So I will place us in recess for the evening, and then we will adjourn at the end of the meeting tonight. And so unless there's anything else, we'll... Just to tag on to what Mr. Boston said, maybe, um, and maybe we'll take that up on this meeting, that this court could, could write a formal letter.